Welcome back to the Serial Report for part two of our Cobalt Rack series. In our last episode, we nailed down a plan to restore one of our Rack 3 servers back to its original condition. If you remember from the first episode in this series, our first rack encountered a general protection fault and a kernel panic. Our second rack, however, was able to boot all the way to a login prompt. We decided to restore this latter one as there were fewer unknowns despite the motherboard capacitors looking pretty bad. So let's jump right into the action. We start first by removing the hard drive. We'll actually be swapping this with the hard drive from the other rack, as that one is the original Seagate 20 gigabyte hard drive, and we believe this one to be a replacement. The memory is next to be removed. Next is the power connector. Oops. I'll just put that back where it was. We found the plastic to be super brittle, so we'll have to be extra careful moving forward. Our very short IDE cable comes out, followed by the power connector for our tiny 35 millimeter fan. Now the CPU heatsink is removed. And this reveals our AMD K62 300 megahertz CPU. With the heatsink out of the way, we can remove the CPU itself. We're almost ready to remove the motherboard, but we need to take out these jack screws on the serial ports first. And last but not least, our front panel connector can be removed. With the motherboard out, now we can remove the power supply bracket and get our first look at the supply itself. Despite the large size of the bracket, the supply is tiny. It's an EOS VLT60-3000 and it outputs 60 watts. Cobalt touted the power efficiency of their servers, so this small output is no surprise. The plastic front panel was removed by carefully unhooking the plastic clips along the perimeter. Unfortunately, we weren't able to remove the front panel PCB as the plastic clips holding that in were bound to break. We don't have any problems with the front panel though, so it's no big deal. With the motherboard out, we can get started on replacing all of the electrolytic capacitors. Many of these are bulging and leaking, indicating that the capacitor is failing. And that's not surprising to see on a system that's over 20 years old now. Failing capacitors can lead to issues or even damage to the components that they are electrically connected to, so it's a good idea to go ahead and replace these. First we try desoldering the capacitors with our desoldering iron. This has a built-in vacuum pump to remove the melted solder. This ended up not working well because the solder used in this board was a high temperature lead free type, combined with very small solder pads, which meant getting enough heat into the solder without damaging the board was problematic. We used a few different techniques, including adding lower temp leaded solder, which helped with the removal. With some patience and only a couple of swear words, we were able to get them all safely removed. Here's the aftermath on the board. The dark substance is electrolyte from the capacitors that is leaked out. This is a corrosive substance and can severely damage the circuit board if not removed. So it's a good thing that we're swapping these out. We removed 16 capacitors in all and you can see what kind of state they were in. Before we solder in the new ones though, we need to clean all of the electrolyte off the board. Our preferred method for cleaning circuit boards is using an ultrasonic cleaner with a cleaning fluid that is safe for electronic components. The ultrasonic cleaner emits high frequency sound waves causing cavitation in the cleaning liquid. 
This creates tiny micro bubbles that essentially scrub the board clean. It's really cool to see it in time lapse here as the contaminants on the board are lifted away safely. After drying the board, the end result is fantastic. There's some very slight discoloration left over from the electrolyte, so if it had been on the board for a longer period of time, it may have done more damage. Everything looks great though, and we're ready to get the new capacitors installed. For the replacements, we're using Nichicon HE series caps, which are rated for long life and low impedance, which is perfect for this application. We did notice something puzzling when starting the replacement. The silk screen on the board doesn't follow the normal method of marking the polarity, meaning the positive and negative orientation of the capacitor. The symbol on the cobalt board has a solid filled in portion placed on the positive side, which is confusing as electrolytic capacitors have their negative pole marked as shown here. The standard silk screen symbol should look something like this one on the right, where the filled in portion is on the negative pole, matching the marking on the capacitor. We're not sure why this was done this way, but we did confirm that Cobalt designed these boards in-house as we previously suspected. So this may have just been a mistake that wasn't caught until after production. So with this in mind, we went ahead and installed all the new caps in the correct orientation, and then bent the leads to keep them in place for soldering. And the last thing we need to do is trim the leads. And here's the finished product with the new caps installed. Everything looks great so we can move on to the rest of the system. Hopefully this isn't becoming a theme on this channel, but there are some more dead bugs here. So let's go ahead and clean up the chassis. There was a checkerboard pattern left from a sticker or some sort of ink on the front panel, but luckily it came off no problem with some isopropyl alcohol. We don't know what this pattern was from, so let us know in the comments if you have any ideas. And while we're at it, we'll go ahead and clean up the inside of the front panel as well. It's time to reassemble, so sit back and enjoy while we get everything back together.
The Rack 3 is completely reassembled, and it's looking great. This machine was involved in one of the most influential times of our history, an era of rapid change when our digital world, the internet, was evolving into something new. Now, the big moment when we see if our work has paid off and if this relic from a bygone era has been brought back to life. And there it is, our Cobalt Rack 3 has successfully booted to the login prompt and it's ready for its software restoration. We were lucky to have found these servers when we did. And now that we've got one back in shape, we'll have plenty of cool things in store for our next episode. Be sure to subscribe to the channel to see our next installment. And until then, thanks for watching The Serial Port.